Hello everyone, in this video, I'm going to help you all understand what different pathologies look like on an ECG. I had also asked a few questions on my Instagram regarding ECG. By the end of this video, you will have the explanations to all those questions as well. Let's get started. This is what a normal ECG looks like. The one in blue is the P wave. This is the QRS and this is the T wave. The P wave indicates atrial depolarization. This means during this phase, the atria of the heart contract. QRS complex represents ventricular depolarization, that is ventricular contraction. The T wave represents ventricular repolarization, which means at this time, the ventricles are relaxed. The start of the P wave till the beginning of QRS is the PR interval. The entire red portion is the QRS interval. QT interval refers to the starting of the red wave here till the end of the T wave. PR segment is the portion between the end of the P wave and the beginning of QRS. This is basically the phase between atrial contraction and ventricular contraction. This delay is brought out by the AV node. The ST segment is between the QRS and the T wave. Segments and intervals might be a little confusing. So I remember them by the letter S. S for segment and S for straight line. Intervals always include a wave. So by looking at this whole picture, we know that QT interval includes ventricular depolarization as well as ventricular repolarization. This is going to be our baseline picture. Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome is the first one on our list. Usually, the impulse moves from the atria to the ventricle via the AV node. The impulse is usually delayed at the AV node. In Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome, there is an accessory pathway between these two chambers of the heart. So, the impulses bypass the AV node and directly enter the ventricles. This way, the ventricles begin to contract earlier than usual. Having understood that, let's see what the ECG looks like. The atria are contracting normally, so the P wave is normal. Since there is an accessory pathway and no delay at the AV node, the ventricles get depolarized quicker than usual. So, this gives rise to a delta wave right here. The other waves will be normal. Since the time between atrial contraction and ventricular contraction is low, the PR interval will be short in Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome. AV block suggests that something's up with the AV node. So, so that should remind you that there's a problem with the PR interval. In a patient with first degree AV block, the P wave will be normal and so will the other waves. But the PR interval will be longer than usual. Note that the PR intervals in all the heartbeats are equal in duration. These patients are usually asymptomatic. Second degree AV block is of two types, Morbitz 1 and Morbitz 2. In Morbitz 1, the P wave, QRS complex and T waves are normal. But the PR interval progressively increases until there's a P wave which isn't followed by a QRS complex. This is known as a drop beat. Drop beat is a characteristic feature of second degree AV block. Since both Morbitz 1 and Morbitz 2 have a drop beat, what differentiates one from another is that in Morbitz 2, the PR intervals are equal in all the heartbeats. Morbid still is a more dangerous type and requires a pacemaker. The next one is third degree AV block. In this, the atria and ventricles beat independently of each other. Sometimes there could be a P wave inside a QRS complex or even inside a T wave. This type of heart block definitely requires a pacemaker. 
Sometimes we can also see a tiny wave right after the T wave. This is known as U wave. It usually indicates hypokalemia. U waves also indicate hypocalcemia, but there is also QTC prolongation seen with hypocalcemia. Remember that questions on the USMLE can have more than one correct option. Sometimes all the options are correct, but if you read the questions carefully, you will note that they always ask us what is the most likely diagnosis. So, we as students should always pick the most correct answer. I hope you all like this video. If yes, give it a thumbs up to show me your support. My channel got featured on Feedspot. A huge thanks to each one of y'all for watching my videos and being a part of this community. Thank you and stay happy.